This episode is part of Lanfrica Talks. Lanfrica Talks provides a platform to showcase efforts in language technologies around the world. To learn more or attend our live sessions, see the description below. Good day, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Lanfrica Talks. I am your moderator, Chris. And for those who are new to this show, the Lanfrica Talks is a place to discover inspiring stories, pioneering projects, interesting research, businesses, and much more. It provides a platform for voices to be shared across an array of subjects, including AI, linguistics, and data governance. Our vision is to amplify underrepresented voices in AI and establish an accessible online repository of knowledge and information for these important areas of life. Follow our podcast and YouTube channel for more talk shows. Today, we host Paul Okewunmi, a passionate machine learning engineer skilled in developing data-driven software and proof-of-concept applications. He has led various tech com communities on Obafemi Awolowo University Campus, OAU, including the AWS Cloud Club and the DSN OAU community. His unwavering commitment to delivering value and driving growth has enabled him to make significant contributions to these communities and to build a reputation as a community leader. Beyond his leadership roles, he maintains an active presence in various tech communities, leveraging his knowledge and expertise to provide guidance and mentorship to aspiring developers. When he's not working, he's either watching tech review videos or binge watching shows on Netflix. We're very happy to have you, Paul. Quick question, what's your current favorite Netflix show? Yeah, my, my current favorite is, uh, I'd say, Lucifer. Wow. Wow, really that, fair, but it's 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 my favorite. That's not that's that's quite an old show, right? Like it's been on for a while. Yeah, it's been on for a while. I see. And what do you like about it? What's um, I like the 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 the, the way they try to portray supernatural characters, or like supreme beings. I see. The way they try to portray supreme supreme beings and and make them show emotions. I see. That's wonderful. All right, Paul, we're super glad to have you and the stage is yours. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, just like Chris has said, I'm Paul. Um, I'm from Obafemi Awolo University, currently in my final year. And I call myself a machine learning engineer. So I'm going to be going through um, this very dear project of mine. Um, it's something I've been working on um, for a while now, and I think uh, yeah, I'm, I'll get it to that point where I would like to share it with, with, with everyone who is willing to, to contribute or is, who finds it interesting enough. Okay, so the, the name of the project is Jumia Lens, um, just like your popular Google Lens. Um, it's a visual product um, search engine for shopping on Jumia. So um, we're going to why Jumia um, later on. But see it as something that helps you to, to search for products um, without typing in your regular query image. Okay, so quickly, let me, um, so I wouldn't, I don't dwell so much on about me again, Chris has done justice to that. So let's go to a, a situation, uh, okay. Okay, so, it's situations where you need to shop and you really don't know how to describe um, what you want to buy or what you're actually looking for can be very frustrating. Um, so give, give, for example, this chair you're looking at, how would you describe this on an e-commerce platform where you want to buy? Do you see a red chair? Um, it is, there are, there are thousands of red chairs. Um, do you see a red chair, white chair, looking like a cup. So like, <laughs> it can get really, really frustrating when you want to find something and you really do not search for it. Okay, so this this is a, this is a, a situation where images can, can come in very handy. So like they say, images are worth a thousand words. So 
you upload an image and find what is in your image. How, how stress-free would that be? So this, this concept came to me when I was shopping on AliExpress. So AliExpress has this feature where you can just scan your scan whatever you're looking for, gives you um gives you the like very, very, very similar um, images, and you just feel very, very well. And for me personally, being an ML person, I try to imagine products that are ML driven or AI driven. And I tried to picture how I would like to solve this, or if I'm to build this on my own, how I'll go about it. So that is how this project was better. So I was sitting down on my chair, saw this image, I saw this feature, I tried it out so many times, gave me very, very awesome inputs and very, very awesome results. But looking through most of the e-commerce platforms on um on in, in, in this side of the world, say your Jimia, your Conga, and the likes. I really haven't seen this feature being implemented. Um, it's quite expensive to, to implement. I get I get that, but um, none of them have given it. I don't know if there's a product going on on than it or it is is a feature being currently worked on. But I haven't seen something like this. And I decided, okay, let me let me give this a shot and let's build let's build the best um uh, visual search engine a one man team can build. I'm taking to note that others can get into um can get into um building with me too. So if you look at the bottom left, you see when you're searching, you can get a lot of results, one up on to 500, where you have to keep clicking next and next and next, and you feel like probably I can find this image. And this is where visual search engines really, really come into play. They help you to save time and they help you to also yield accurate results. Okay, so um, I talked about companies really not doing this or like having very few companies doing this. The, the reason being is very, very expensive and um, you need to you need to be able to it, it can it can break your 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 platform. Why? So I could decide to search for a product and if I get very, very terrible results, I I lose interest. So why not just let's stick to what let's stick to what works. Um, that is a traditional search. Type in what you want, we'll give it to you. Um, so the image recognition accuracy, because images can come in different forms, different camera angles. Um, so it, it gets very, very, very challenging to find what you want using images. So you meaning you need to do a lot of training and a lot of data gathering. The, the data set needed for something like this is also um, very, very large. You need to have a repository of data or a repository of images and metadata where you can pull from and train with. So companies that own these platforms, they can use, since they have a collection of images already, they can use that. But for someone like um, you who wants to build a proof of concept around this or something similar, I have to go through other means to access these images. And I'll talk about how I was able to access um, a moderate size data set. Also to scale, you need this to be very fast. You need it to run on mobile. You need to give results very, very fast. So this makes um, things a lot more challenging. Okay, so what was now the objective of my project if I'm to sum it up into two very broad categories of two bullet points. First is for guys who want to build um, e-commerce applications um, using computer vision, yeah, so I can give a starting point. This is the same way I couldn't I couldn't find a data set that could um, make me start whatever what I wanted to build. This is a, a data set that can make you um, that gives you um, a, a starting point. So it, may, it brings you to okay, forgetting about creating a data for now and trying to build something. So creating a data set that can I can I can use and others can use. Then two, which is the main thing. Um, build a visual search engine out of this data set. So this sound, this sound um, stands as um, the foundation of whatever model I'm going to be building. And as as uh, more effort is put in, um, I can progress. So um, how was I able to collect data? Well, how was I able to even um, start this up? So if you look um, at two slides before, you see that for every image, there are corresponding metadata. Metadata could be um 
the, the price, the, the name, the so and you know e-commerce websites, their their prices change. You can see formerly this price, you have this new price. Sometimes you can see um um this this product is available for 10% off for this period. So like the, the data keeps changing some in some way. It, it's not stable, it's not so and this there are for e-commerce website, there are a lot of JavaScript and a lot of moving parts to your website. So data collection can be very, very um difficult. But one platform I found quite easy to um scroll and um, script data from was Jumia. And um I was able to find my way around consistently getting um product category images. So say I want backpacks and wristwatches and I can get this this data set in a consistent manner. And for this very base, um, basic data set, I was able to um, start with about eight, eight broad categories. So I, I, I say broad categories because within the category of backpacks, you can have so many looking backpacks. Like you can have white, black, you can have very, very, very um, diverse looking backpacks, wristwatches, you can have fitness bands, you can have, um, you can have Apple, Apple um iWatch, you can have this very regular chain watch. So like these are broad categories, which means that if I'm to train something, um, it needs to actually understand these very distinct categories. This is a a summary of what the data set looks like. So you have your, your headset, mouse, and so the way I was able to come up with these initial categories were just um very common. Um, images or very common products around me, or let's say, say on my work desk, on my work desk, and um, there's room for improvement. This data, this data can still expand. It can go to um, way more categories. I decided to do this in a, I just, I decided to do this as eight broad categories. Why? Because if you want to do, um, if you want to do it product by product, it means that you'll be gathering. Say for example, phones. You'll be gathering images of the say iPhone different varieties of phones there's the iPhone 7 8 9 8s there's the 10s there's the so like there are just so many categories and it is going to be more expensive and more challenging for me um fetching this kind of data sets okay so how do you now train um an image retrieval model how do you train an image retrieval model it's quite um a minute please Okay, so training an image retrieval model is is um it used to be difficult for me regular. So for for guys that have the the technical background, you think okay, this is just let's say this is this is a is an image classification task, and we have, you just have eight categories and yeah yeah predicting what class an image falls in. It's it's a different ball game from image classification. Why? Because yeah, you're not trying to get. And you're not trying to put images into different classes, but instead you're trying to find the most similar images. You need your model to be able to tell image A from image B, or try to give you a measure of how similar images are. So if you look at the, the network I have here, um, I won't go too, tech, too deep into um, the technicalities, but if you look at the, the, the network I have here, you have a CNN feature structure, um, 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 sorry, a, a CNN feature extractor, which could be anything. It could be your, your regular um, retrain models. But then a very important piece is, is the arc face layer or the loss that you, you use for your model. So um, arc face is a, is a very popular loss used for um, loss function use in training facial recognition softwares. So it gives you an idea of what you are expected of doing because if you're training image um, facial recognition um, models, faces look very, very similar. And you, you want to be able to even distinguish between twins. So you mean, so, so, so you need something that can actually discriminate between features or call them embeddings. And if you look at, I got this image from, from, from the paper itself. If you look at the way Softmax works, Softmax is something used for a regular categorical um, regular image classifications and um, image classification tasks. 
the embeddings aren't as far apart. There's no can the, the power to discriminate between embeddings is very little where you have see them sharing the same decision boundaries, but you don't want that. You want them to be um quite distinct. So if you see the it's, compared to what ArcFace does to you, it's, it gives you that uh, margin where you can have um embeddings quite separated. Okay, so then moving on to um to the results gotten from using a network like this. Um, you see what um what I was trying to explain where you have your embeddings in um your, your embedding space showing that distinction, showing that um clustering of different categories. And if you try to zoom in, you see that okay, yeah, you have backpacks um in this embedding space and the, the side of your of your of your plots you have different categories taking different sides so just make it very easy for the model to be able to tell what category images fall in okay so if this is too um difficult to read something like that will be easy to read is the result so look at the query image in the first row it is a very distinct looking mouse um, you probably pro people have probably not seen this kind of mouse before, but yeah, it's a very distinct looking mouse and not very popular. But you see the 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 um similarity, the similar images that was given by the model, um, something that was very 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 convincing. So you have similar image one, similar image two, image three. When you get to image four, you see that um the similarity tends to reduce as as you get far away from the query image. So look at this very distinct looking um, flash drive. If I'm to describe what this is, I in, on my first guess, I probably may not guess a flash drive, but then you see that the similar images gotten, um, given this query image look exactly like it. Um, the same thing for this, this chair and the same thing for say this USB hub. But then if you look at the USB hub, you see that the first query image was an headset, uh, what, sorry, was it was a earpiece, not what it is actually. Um, so this gives us, uh, I'll be going into the limitations of um, of what, of the limitations of, of this, my current model and, and the old system. Okay. So what would deploying an image retrieval model look like? Like um, for, for guys with some background, you feel like, oh, it's a model, a model takes in an, an input, gives out, um, gives out, spits out an output. But because of the fact that you're working, you're not working with just the input and output, but you need to also find, you, you need to fetch similar, um, you need to fetch similar images from somewhere. So first, you know, so this is what the pipeline is going to look like, where you have a query image, then you have something that helps you to extract the embeddings. So um, you, you load your, your train model, then you load whatever, Processing step, you pre process your image and you extract, you can you generate an embedding. So the embedding is passed to a sort of nearest neighbor service. So nearest neighbor meaning it's trying to find the most similar embeddings in, in your store, in your data store, your vector store, um, to your query image. Um, by the way, embeddings are just like numerical representations of of um of your inputs. So um, for this, I used um, Pinecone vector vector database. Um, so one thing with this project was I've always added and I've always used um, your direct, direct, the traditional KNN algorithm. But then if I'm going to deploy something like this, it's it's not as easy as you querying a database. So when the advent of various databases like your Pinecone, Vivid, um, Quadrant, just make just made deployment of something like this way more easy where you you upload all you you upset all your embeddings to the to the to the vector database then you can always query and get um similar images so you should all um something that that also helps to get very very good results is a ranking is a is sort of a ranking service so what's a ranking service just say you have 10 similar images, but all the images you got were all the same. And you don't want to repeat images. So you want to delete duplicates. You want to do some sort of post-processing. Um, you want to, yeah, you want to do some sort of post-processing. You want to remove some categories of images. 
you want to do something. So this ranking service, you can all put those steps into it. Then you have your output. So this is what it looks like. So on the platform I'm going to demo, you upload an image um, and it goes through all this, then gives you um, the corresponding outputs very, very, very quickly. Um, one thing that I helped to speed this up was the, the vector database used. Okay. So some limitations to actually note when build, um, for building something like this. Um, I uh, Just like the saying of um, your model is as good as the data you give it. So if you look at, if you look at the, if, if I go back to um, the, um, if you look at the, the kind of images you are, the model was trained with, they are product images in the sense that they have a very plain background and you have just the product in focus. So you have just, if it's a mouse, you have just a mouse. If it's a chair, you have just a chair and, and, and so on. But when you want to use this in the real world, you probably wouldn't create a white background or you probably wouldn't clear things up on your table before taking the image. You just keep out your phone, take, take the image and you, you upload. So there's there's that bias of not um, doing well when you when you have product images or when you have very plain backgrounds and um, a, a a a a a decrease in accuracy when you have very busy background. Um, <clears throat> we also have um, a limit, we also have lim the limitation of of having just eight broad categories, like I said. So one reason why this why I'm sharing this project is I feel like more could be done in expanding the the data set or creating new categories or getting new yeah new categories and and retraining and it's not really a one man thing and I feel like this can just make a very good a, a very good overall project so expanding this is a limit expanding the number of categories would really go a long way in helping the model and do better you also have the user interface being a lot of work. So um, me being a technical person and my technical and my expertise being in mostly ML, there's the deficiency of building very, very nice user interface, something that your user will want to use um, and not just anything. So because for me, it's just be, okay, let's test this and let it work. But for your users, it's going to be um, that very smooth user experience for them. and. You want them to come back, of course. So, yeah. So these are like some limitations um, of of what I currently have. And if you want to introduce a new, if you want to introduce a new category, you you have to retrain your models. Why? Because you have to regenerate your, regenerate your embeddings, um, which also brings in scalability. So it's it's quite difficult to scale an image retrieval model. So we are going to quickly try it out. Um, your feedback, your feedbacks are important, of course, because I need to know what kind of images I get. Is, is the model getting wrong? Is your what kind of outputs are you getting? And is it something way way off from your query image and, and stuff like that? I've been in, I've been doing quite a lot of testing, but I, I feel like more could be done. Um, if you want to contribute to the repository, it's very open and and or you can just shoot me a DM and and we can go about it. But quickly, I'm going to um just show a demo of what it currently looks like. Okay, so this is what it currently looks like. Like I said, the UI is still need a lot of work. Um, you can upload a product image. So I'm just going to look for something I can, something I can quickly upload to show. Uh, okay, so look at this mouse. Let's see. Yeah, look at this mouse um, where I try to, search for similar images. Um, let's see what it gives us. So look at the query image and look at the output image. Um, this is not exactly what I'm looking for, but I feel like this is a good, it has done a good job giving me um, the category of, mouse, of mice I want, um, like the gaming mouse I want. So if you look at this, you see, very um, good re resemblance between the query image and your search image. And you can actually just go ahead to purchase if, if it's one thing, if it's something you want to get, oh, that link was. So if it's something I want to get, I can go ahead to purchase 
and yeah and and purchase whatever i want on that platform the image same thing for every other product you can go ahead to click and purchase um I, like i said ui still needs a lot of work but uh, let's try out one more um let's try out one more one more um one more image I tried this out already. Okay, look, let's look at one more. So, so I'm, up, I'm uploading an image of my backpack. It's my school bag. And we'll see what the output looks like. Seems to be taking a lot of, a lot of time uploading. But let's, let's just quit that. Let's go quick, to using Pamela. quick question while it's while it's loading. When it's uploading, what's really happening? Is it sending it to a server, I guess the PyCon thing, or is it doing everything on the uh, on the interface? What's happening? Okay, so when you upload an image, it loads the model. So the, the kind of deployment um happening going on is is one where the model is built with the app. So if but um scaling it is it, scaling it further, you would have to separate the model and the application where you just access your model via an API. But what is going on currently on Ogin Face um, spaces is we are loading the model, then you are passing in the image. The model is extracting the embedding, then the embedding is then passed to um Pinecone, then Pinecone gives you similar images. So what the output is now what is being rendered on the platform. I see. Thank okay. you. So um if you want to try this out, you can you can use you can I, I put some sample queries you can use. So look, let's look at um this distinct looking watch. Like you can see sometimes it is not the exact same thing, but it is very similar. This watch is definitely very similar and very different from an Apple Watch, for example. So look, you can see um, this is a this is let's see what this gives. This is an earpiece, and this is also and you see that following images are also earpiece, but they may not just be as um, as close to your query image as the further you, the the further you get the the less the resemblance, and you can just click and go ahead to purchase. Uh, some of my links are are linking to very. Yeah, so some of the links are I'm I'm not linking properly. Okay, so um let's do, let's do one more. This is just a an exact replica of what we, what has been uploaded and yeah. So um let me quickly round up what I have and I go ahead to take any questions available. Okay, so I said the the, the repo is also available and you can go ahead to to contribute. Um, has some of the references, and and I particularly want to reference um the the Google Landmark Retrieval Challenge. So this this challenge was one that that helped me to conceptualize image retrieval because of the so many resources that are available um in the notebook section and in the discussion section. So this explains to you why we are using a a, a loss function like hack face loss or how to even implement our case load because most major deep learning libraries do not implement it um or how how should you how should you structure your your architecture to get what you want and stuff like that then for the system design how to architect the system i want to reference um bytes bytes go very very useful resources and very very helpful resource um there's so many other system design um you can get inspiration from and build, build, build very awesome projects. Okay, so thank you very much for, um, for having me. I'm Paul Okeomi, so you can reach out to me on LinkedIn, Paul Okeomi, or Twitter, Paul underscore Okeomi. And that will be it. Thank you very, very much, Paul. This has been a very interesting presentation. Um, okay, so, we are done with the research side of things and we will slowly proceed into a more interactive style. I have some.